I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Afonso Gonzalez and Adam Kernitz, the film editors for the Todd Haynes documentary, The Velvet Underground, about how the influential band rose to prominence in the late 60s and 70s. Uh, Afonso, the first question I want to ask uh, goes to you. Um, was the structure of the movie already determined by the time you and Adam started editing, or was that something you worked on as you went along in the editing process? Well, I mean, the full structure of the movie was not, but uh, Todd, from the beginning, he had an idea. He had an idea to use Chelsea Girls as the, the, the Warhol film, as sort of template for how we're going to present the images and the interview and sort of, it, and, and from that, we sort of, there was a, we, we could move forward from that. Uh, and it just expanded and Adam, by the time we started, because Todd started, he, he did the interviews, uh, me and Adam started working on the film and then we had to stop me and Todd because he did, uh, we went out to shoot Dark Waters, but Adam stayed on. So Adam was the one that sort of like expanded and tried different things and like multiply the images and stuff like that. So it's kind of like that. There was the, 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 the idea of Chelsea Girls that just exploded with more ideas. Uh, and Adam, what I wanted, uh, next question I wanted to ask to you, um, uh, did you get to uh, choose which parts of the archival clips to use for the film? And if so, what was that process like? Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, it was it, it was one of the greatest um, work experiences I've ever had. Uh, if you're interested in experimental film like I am, um, and some of the greatest experimental filmmakers are working at that time, um, and we had access to just hundreds of experimental films, experimental animations, um, and, you know, part of my job is to build out what the story and the structure is going to be and choose images, right? And then, of course, Todd has to come in and sign off on all these images that I chose or that Fonz chose. Um, uh, so, I, I mean, the process itself was a long process. There was over 600 hours of footage and I had to watch it all. So um, that's the first thing you have to do. And then you have to go in and start winnowing down. Um, it took a really long time, but it was a pleasure every minute of it. And, and also, all the music they have to listen to and all the and, photographs they went, they went through. Yeah, and, and plus the interview and all that, right? So yeah, it's like exactly. build, building the story with the interview, also going in and looking at archival and just listening to music the whole time. Yeah. So uh, Afonso, I think I read uh, somewhere that uh, at one point at the beginning of the pandemic, when you were editing this, that you and Todd Haynes were quarantined together uh, at the beginning of this. Is that true? No, this is a, it's funny that the story was, was portrayed that that wasn't true. We were not quarantining together. We just happened to be uh, in LA at the same time we were cutting in Venice. And then the, the, the COVID, hit when everybody says you can't go anywhere so both me and him live very close to the cutting room so we would walk to the cutting room and then we it's just just the two of us it's a cut it was like a, a post post house where everyone left but me and todd so we would we come in at 9 a.m we work to 7 p.m every day it was just the two of us but then we go home it's not like we were we're sleeping in the cutting room together i mean we would but it's just like we could act we could actually go home we're not that far from from going home Probably made the working relationship a bit more tolerable, I'm guessing. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, that, I mean, it would be awesome, but. Okay. Um, the other, uh, I did want to ask you another question, though, Afonso. Um, I know uh, you worked with Haynes on quite a number of projects uh, recently over the years, and I was curious, how did that working relationship come about? Uh, the first time I worked with Todd was on Mildred Pierce. They needed two editors for the, the HBO show. They needed two editors and they had one and then I interviewed for the job and I did that job and it really got along. And I started before the second editor. I stayed after the second editor left 
and I stuck to the very end to like through the mix and everything. And it was a very easy uh, uh, work relationship. And then we just became it's like a personal relationship also evolved that we became friends. And so that's 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 how it happened. And uh, Adam, I wanted to ask you about the um, the the flip side of that. Uh, were there did you did you find that there were any challenges coming onto this project, especially since Afonso and Todd had such a long had 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 all these years working together? No, um, Todd is super easy to um, be around and uh, get along with, and uh, Afonso and I had already cut. Uh, Gimme Danger together a few years before. So it felt very much like slipping into um, like, you know, slipping into an old team or something. So uh, I felt very welcome and very much part of it, you know? And um, Afonso, I, I'm, I wanted to piggyback off something that Adam was asking, uh, Adam was talking about, about how he had to watch you know, all, you know, all 600 hours of uh, this footage that was going, did you have to watch all of that together? And to both of you, I'm curious, how do you, how do you fit that into your day? Because <laughs> it sounds like something very arduous and something you'd have to plan. I mean, I, I, I had to watch it. I probably watched it about like 200 hours less than Adam did, uh, but I had to watch it. But I mean, I'm to the point that Adam knew so well that when I was cutting, when me and Todd finally got back, once we finished our quarters and we basically rejoined Adam, that I could just like, okay, I'm looking something, I'm, I'm working on this, this part of the film and I'm looking for something that's like this. And Adam's like, okay, go to this bin, go to this part, go to this time code, that's where you find it. So he had, not only he watched everything, he had in his brain, like where, where I could find the stuff. So it was great. I mean, I, I, I watched it, but because I didn't have that much time to watch everything and like like keep it in my mind. So uh, Adam was a lot, like, it was amazing to have his brain input. And Adam, I was curious, how do you go about, you know, f you know, getting all of that footage into, into your, you know, watching all of that? Well, that's just part of the process. You know, if someone gives you 600 hours to watch, they have to know that the first thing you're going to do is spend 600 hours watching footage um, and not cutting anything, you know? So you have to spend, and that's, uh, you know, that's months of time, you know, before anything gets done, just watching. Um, and then you have to go back in and start making selects and, and creating the rough cut and all of that. Um, so it just is part of the process of cutting a documentary is watching everything is the first thing you have to do. And you really, I believe, kind of need to be passive. You have to let it wash over you. You can't be saying, oh, this is great. I'm going to choose this. I'm, this is great. You don't know what anything is until you watch it all. So that really has to be the first thing you do. Yeah, it takes a, it's like a really enormous amount of discipline yeah. to just to you have to you can't really like leap forward. You have to go step by step. You really have to know, watch everything and then break down where everything fits and then just, just go about. I mean, it, it is time consuming, but it's, uh, it's just that's part how of it makes it work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so Adam, uh, one other thing I was uh, curious about was, you know, uh, in hearing what Afonso was saying about how you like had all these, you know, all these, you know, things, you know, in your head about what, about which clips you wanted to use for what, was there any specific part of the documentary where it was re that you found it very challenging to find that to, to find that right clip to go along with it? No, I, I, I don't think so. I think we use so many different kinds of techniques on how to choose images that uh, challenge is not really the word that I would use. Um, you know, sometimes you're dealing with, um, you know, we are in New York, they're about to play their first, first show. So we just want to show a New York street. So you ask your archival producer, 
get me a New York street with a lot of steam coming out and make it really sort of like dark and ominous and, and that's it. But then when you're cutting the John Cale childhood section, you're dealing with a lot of metaphor, a lot of things that are just atmospheric uh, and not directly connected to what's being said. So then you're doing things like intuitive editing or, um, or sort of like things that are indirectly connected. Um, and that is just fun. It's not a challenge, it's just fun to do. Uh, so no, I, I, can, I, I mean, what we do is extremely hard. The whole thing is a huge undertaking and it's a huge challenge. It's very, very difficult thing to do. Um, but having said that, I almost never feel like I'm at work. And there wasn't one day that I felt like I was at work when I was cutting the Velvet Underground. It was such a pleasure. I can't believe they paid me to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's always a good sign, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wait, they paid you? They did. I got paid. Sorry. Oh, man. It started to ruin Wait that. a second. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just, I just, I, I, I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken over the revelations, but I love that we're going to break the story. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, this, uh, Afad, so this question is to you, but also Adam, I would love to hear uh, your uh, response to this as well. Um, upon viewing the final cut of the movie, uh, were there any edits or cuts or uh, clips that you chose that when you saw them? Uh, in the fi in the final p in the final project, you were particularly proud of seeing those in that of seeing those in that final cut. Particularly proud. That's I mean that's hard. Uh, I mean there are sequences that it feels good to watch. You know, I mean a lot of my favorite sequence I didn't cut. Adam did, but so I feel proud of the work he did. <laughs> I feel like. I love, I mean, when you first get to the factory, uh, it's astounding. It's like, it's, it's like, I watch it, it's like, I, I, I don't even know how Adam did this. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a awesome to watch. Um, I, think, I think for me, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a lot. I'm a very, very proud of the work that I did on the film. Uh, I'll say my favorite scene that Fonz cut was the when Mo and Sterling uh, become part of the band and Fonz built this whole soundscape of the way they got together. Um, for me, I, I, I don't know. I think it's probably the, the, the factory section. Um, I, remember, I remember turning to Fonz after we watched the first rough cut and saying, I'm never ever gonna cut anything that good ever again. It's yeah. just, it's so great. Um, but the whole, I think the whole film is really a knockout. So yeah, yeah. I'm proud of all of it. Well, uh, Afonso and Adam, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time. We wish you all the best over this upcoming season and to all of our viewers, please like this video, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can outsmart the top prognosticators in Hollywood. Thanks so much, guys. Great. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks a lot. All right.